Okay. Michelle, it's raining out. Thank yes. you for coming out. I know you didn't have to, but we gave you 48 hours notice. Right. And you, you got to get your hair done. Right. Just hair and makeup, you know. No, I'm joking. <laughs> uh, let's get into a little bit. You know, you have uh, a little bit of uh, stuff online about you. You know, you've done TV. You've done comedy. You've done pretty much everything in the reality realm. Um, and stand up, right? You've done a little no, bit. No, no, You're not at funny. all. Yes, You're just funny. naturally. If you know me, you get to hear my jokes. <laughs> we came out here like a spitfire, so we want to get a little bit into it of who you really are and what um, makes you you. Got you. You so you you want me to run down my yeah, bio? Let's talk or? about who you are. Like who who are you, and why are you sitting here today? Mainly because I asked you, but you know, there's a lot more that where that comes. Right, that's true. So, like, where do you want to start? Like, let's start. Let's, give me well, who somewhere. Are you? Who are you? Where'd you come from? So, I grew up in Houston, Texas, um, by way of Florida. I was born in Florida. My mom went to FAMU, and she had me while she was in college. So, I used to go. That's why I'm so smart. Because when I was a baby, I would go to, to college classes with her and just sit in the classes. You know what I mean? Sorry. <laughs> And so, and then we went to Houston because it was like a big oil boom. So that was supposed to be like the next city on the map to go to, to live. And so I was raised in Houston, but my family's from Gary, Indiana. So I would go back and forth from Houston to Gary. Gary, Indiana. Isn't that where Michael Jackson was born? Yes. That's where he's from. He grew, yeah. I guess he kind of grew up there. Okay. So you, your mom was living in Florida and then she moved after she got her degree or did she actually- After she got her degree. My mom and dad. Uh Uh-huh. So- she was pregnant with you and she got her college degree? Yes. Wow. Well, she had me, and then that's why I was in classes with her. So she, to, for her to complete her oh, degree. She was in the tummy. She actually no, I was in the baby wow. carrier. So yes. I don't know too many women that actually would have completed college and had the baby with her. Your mom was dedicated. Yes. So yes. she was already a winner. She was already goal oriented. Exactly. And, uh, and I was able to, you know, the. The books, I guess the smartness just seeped in through the lectures. What was your mom trying to be? Hey, she was, her degree is in uh, communications, broadcasting. So, like, she would work at the radio stations in Houston. So, that was a fun life. So, wait, you were studying communications. I mean, most, you know, infants at your age, you know, is keep little <laughs> books and whatnot. You were studying communications, basically. Probably so. That's why I'm a people person. Yeah. No, but I, mean, I think I think just um, in that learning environment. Wow. So your mom graduated. Walk me through this. Your mom graduated. You know, you graduated with her. Yes. You guys moved to Florida. I mean, sorry, you were in Florida, but you moved from Florida to Texas, right? Yes. And then from Texas, uh, where was your dad? Together. Oh, so we together, all together. drove. So, so everybody was together in Florida, both yes. taking school. What was your dad doing at the time? So my dad, so both of them were from Gary, Indiana. My mom went to college in Florida. My dad came to California and came to college. So he finished before my mother. So he went to a two-year college. So then he came back to Florida for my mom. They created me, and then they decided to move to Houston. Wow, that's really neat because, I mean, the dedication there for moving from, first off, you know, people know Gary, Indiana for Michael Jackson. Yes. You know, small town, right? Mm-hmm. And then moving from there to Florida, pursuing a dream, having a little one. It's just, I mean, mm-hmm. that's a lot. I mean, they were super dedicated and they have you, you know, and it's, it's you know, being, they were, they were how old were they? In their 20s, early 20s, yes. right? Yes, mm-hmm. Which is really scary. Right. But I think they had big goals and like most of the people from Gary, Indiana are like special people. They're not weak. They really push hard. They want a lot out of life. You know what I mean? Now, some people, I don't want to say got stuck there, but you know, can, you can get, a lot of people got caught up and now it's like one of the worst cities to live in and it's kind of a ghost town, but it, great people came from there. What was that like growing up, you know, in Florida or did you guys move directly from Florida to Texas? Right. right. So I don't remember living um, in Florida. None of it. Okay. Mm-hmm. And then living in Texas, you know, growing up, what was that like? You know, who inspired you? You know, what did you want to be growing up? Mm-hmm. You know, did your parents help you with those decisions? Well, I think from a young age, I always wanted to be um, an actress. So when I was younger, my mom would try to take me to casting calls and stuff like that. But she didn't know how to do it in Houston. It wasn't a very big, um, you know, big feel for acting and all that kind of stuff. So she tried, like, taking me to agents and all that kind of stuff. But it just never really panned out because she just couldn't figure it out there. Did you ever do any commercials or any print work? No, school plays. School plays? But mm-hmm. you, you're feeling it, though. And, you know, the, obviously, it molded who you are right now. 
um, in life. And you're, you're a fun, bubbly person. You know, you're always very caring and considerate, you know, just from the short time I've known you. You know, you've always been the same consistent person, not like some of the people in L.A. where, mm-hmm. you know, they're yes. fake for, you know, front and they're nice to you, but you're nice all the way through. Mm-hmm. Um, did you think that, you know, that was from Texas? Because the Texans out there are really genuine people. Yes, I do. I think it's from Texas. Because um, Texas has uh, that southern hospitality. But people want things. So you know how in some country towns, it's like, they're like, don't, don't do too much because something might happen. And in Houston, people are not like that. They want big things. They want like the big cheese. And, the, you know, they want to conquer. Every, everything is big in Texas. That's true. So... Tell me this. So you're here. You're in your 20s, right? You're yeah. still in Texas. Yes. Right? Um, you still want to be an actress. Mm-hmm. And then what what made you move to California? How did that even come about? Well, first, I wanted to go off to college and I didn't. Um, and I always tell my parents, you all should should have pushed me I, like the Serena Williams type of parents yeah. or father. I'm like, that's what I feel. And that, it doesn't work for everybody. But I'm like, I should have had those type of parents who like didn't let me do what I wanted to do. It's like, no, you need to go off to college and you need to experience. Sorry, sorry. We're talking about you, though. Right. So when I'm laughing because your parents trying to tell you. Right? Yeah. But but sometimes people know things that will be good for you. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like e- even dealing with um, you in real estate. I what do I do? I like Ty. I like this house. I like this. And you're like, Michelle, that's not what you want. No, because you told me explicitly. So exactly. You're right. That's actually a so good analogy. So sometimes you need people to bring you back to reality or to push you to your reality. Yeah. I so, yeah. Okay. So people were saying, you remember how Atlanta kind of blew up? Yeah. People were saying that Houston was going to be the next place to blow up. So I was kind of trying to wait a little while and see what was going to happen. You know what I mean? And then I was like, no, I got to get out of here. I, I have to go. So what prompted you to move? Like, so I, always, I had an uncle out here. So I always would come out here in the summertime. So I was familiar with L.A. And then I just was like, I'm just going to go for it. Because I was trying to be a flight attendant and 9-11 happened. So then they sent me a letter saying, you know, right now, because of the circumstances, we're not hiring anymore. But, you know, after every, basically after everything dies down, not then. Not a joke, but that's a very deadly job. Yes, right. Yeah. So then I was like, you know what? I'm going to L.A. I just knew I wanted to get out of Houston. You know, I was like, I, it's time to go. It, it's, it's more for so me. So how did you have the money, the support to move California? Because California is so expensive. Right. Well, first of all, in Houston, I had my own condo, my own car, of course. But I was a realtor. So I was making money. You know, I always know how to make money. Wow. What was the market there like? Um, it's not as expensive here as, as it is here. So you, you could make money, but I didn't have any kids. I didn't like... I know how to make my money, you know, last, and I know what's important and what I was doing. So I just saved money, and then I have friends here from Houston that were like, "Just come, move, come stay with us for a while until you find a place." So you're licensed in Houston to sell real estate. Mm-hmm. It was having this boom because it was definitely growing, right? Mm-hmm. And I think in the last what ten years, Houston's pretty much doubled in size with all the building mm-hmm. and a lot of the international monies coming in to right, develop right. and oil money's coming out and you know so it's, it's a very fancy lifestyle out there mm-hmm. actually kind of similar to la except i don't know if it's so fake out there it's what you see is what you get the bigger lifestyle and mm-hmm. uh the cost of living is a lot you know a lot more inexpensive right right yeah and people it's like no reason to front you know what i mean here people want to be in hollywood they want to you know be part of because it's a lot of money out here so they also want to be a part of that you know be cool and be it so so you ended up moving to la but where in la so i moved to ladera heights ladera heights that's nice yes that's where my friends were living so i didn't know where to go because my uncle he lived in south central so when we would come visit when we would you know go visit him we would go to south central because if it's funny how everybody all the black people live kind of like south of wilshire boulevard but you lived in Ladera Heights. Right, which was, it was nice. Super nice. Ladera Heights is nice. There's multi-million dollar mansions. Right. I've been to a few. Okay. I've shown a couple. Mm, you sold a few? No, I didn't sell any few, but I mean, they-, they Almost. Were, no, not even almost. They kept me to the side. Oh, okay. 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 So, um, yeah, okay. So, living in Ladera Heights. <laughs> <laughs> and Next live- to the Magic Johnson Theater. Oh, that's Baldwin Hills. No, there's Ladera Heights right there. I mean, the, it may be making my way. No, you, you, no, you're talking about the TGI Fridays. 
Is that what it is? Yes. The Magic Johnson TGI Fridays oh, was yes, in yes. Ladera Heights. Heights. Yes. yes, yes and yes. the Baldwin Hills Theater is in, I mean, yeah, the, it's at the Baldwin Hills Crenshaw Mall. You know what's crazy? People that are not educated don't realize how nice Ladera Heights really is. I mm-hmm. mean, it's beautiful. It's got views. It's clean. I mean, the And it's quick access to the city. I mean, it's right there, literally. You can be in Hollywood in like 20 minutes. Mm-hmm. I mean, like, no, no joke. Right. So you, sorry, not to go off the real estate, because obviously, you know, that's my profession. But, right. But, you know, here you are. You're in your 20s. You moved to Ladera Heights. Your uncle lived in South Central. Yes. Which is, you know, what, how, I don't even know how far that is, because I haven't actually. Maybe 10 minutes. 10 minutes to South Central? Yeah, 10, 15 minutes. Not far at all. And in, in South Central, did you go there a lot, or? No. No. No, because yeah. that, like, no. Because, like, I remember one time I was going to get my hair braided, and I told my uncle I'm going to come by and see him afterwards. And he was like, okay. Um, and at this time I had a Range Rover. And he was like, so are you, are you driving that fancy truck over here? And I was like, yes. He was like, no, you know what you're going to do? You're going to come drive to my house, and I'm going to drop you off, and I'm going to leave the truck at my house. Well, and then let me know when you're ready, and I'll come back and pick you up. Seriously? It was, Seriously. It was that dangerous? It was, like, down the street from the Snooty Fox Motel. I don't know what that is. It's like a landmark in that area. But yeah, he was like, no, I think I'm just going to, I'm going to drop you off. And it was no discussion. When, first off, what were you doing with the Range Rover? You must have been selling a lot of properties in uh, Houston. Well, no, I didn't have it as soon as I came here. It was after, you know, a while. And I was in a relationship. With who? So I, was, I used to be married to Mike Epps. Um, so comedian? I, yes. So I met him a few weeks after moving to L.A. Okay. Yes. All right. So you wait a minute what, what year was this first off because we talked about 9-11 you know you right. trying to get a job with airlines that was cut off right what were you doing here you lived in ladera heights well, obviously with some girlfriends i'm assuming yes uh-huh. and then what were you doing out here so i came out here to be an actress so what landed you to get married because here you are being an actress out here you're going through a lot of roles right i mean did you take did you take any roles any rules? What do rules. You, rules. Oh, you okay. with rules? No, definitely not. But rules, uh, yes. Right, I did. I did. Okay, so so when I came out here, I met him a couple of weeks after coming out here, and the relationship just kind of took off really fast, right? And he was in the industry. We had like minds in, industry-wise. So um, he was just about to start a movie. So it was like I was on set with that and just kind of seeing how everything goes, you know? So I was doing that. We didn't get married till like four or five years after meeting. We met in 2001. You met your, your husband, your ex-husband, doing movie or? Uh, no, we met at the mall. You met at the mall? Mm-hmm. Here you are, an actress, and he said, hey, what do you do? No, so, so like, okay, I, was, I had been in the house with my girlfriends hanging, you know, like I'm in L.A. So I called my dad, and I'm like, you know, I'm in L.A. because I don't know where to go. And, you know, sometimes some people are not as ambitious as you are. I just moved there. So I'm like, I'm trying to meet people. Like, let's, let's get it together. I came here to make it. <laughs> so I'm like, and I called my dad, and he was like, what are you doing? And I was like, we're just in the house. He was like, wait a minute, you're in the house? He was like, you didn't move there to sit in the house. Go do something. So then I told him, I was like, let's go to the mall or something. Let's go do something. Because, you know, you can always go to the mall in every city. People know you go to the mall. Like, How old were you at that point? So I was young. I was in early 20s. So you went to the mall. Early. I think I barely turned 20. Wait a minute. And your, fu- your future husband at the time, how, what, was the, what was the difference in age at the time? 10 years. 10 years. Mm-hmm. So he was preying on you at that point. He saw you, young, cute girl, cool, you know, spitfire. I guess and, so. Because I'm sure that was the same personality you've always yes, had. Yes, I think I was more spicy then. Yeah? Yes. Because you're definitely spicy. Yeah, I was very turned up. Um, he probably loved that about you because you, you're that kind of person that's like, you know, hard to get, real cool. And, but uh, we had like an instant connection, honestly. You know, it, it, he reminded me of somebody I've known for years. So it's kind of we had that instant connection, exchanged numbers. And I remember he was at the Forever 21. Forever 21? Isn't that a girl store? Right. But he was talking to somebody in there trying to get some trees, you know? So <laughs> whatever. Really? Yeah. What? So anyway, so now we, I think that night we went out. I think, yeah, that night we went out and just, we just always was hanging out. Wait, so you met him in Forever 21 and he was shopping for something totally different. You were shopping right. for some stuff and he just said, hey, let me get your number. You're kind of cute. I saw you on aisle three over there. With the no, it's no aisles in, in Forever I, I, 21. That's there. the grocery saying, store. 
<laughs> I don't know what it is. It's just a huge freaking store. Right, right. And, and he's like, hey, let me get your number. You know, I'm going to get this over here, and then I'm going to get this over here. Kind of I thing. guess. But so I, 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 I'm, now I'm new to town. So I'm like, you know, and then I was thinking, okay, he's in some movies. He's not going to do anything to me. You know what I mean? Like safety-wise. Did you wise. know who he was, though? Yeah, kind of. Not really. I wasn't like, oh, my gosh, that's so-and-so. You know? I kind of did. So we, so we exchanged numbers. And then, like I said, we were hanging out and hitting off. And then we would always go to the comedy club because that was his thing. So we're going to the comedy club. So I really learned the business from being with him because I was around it often. You know what's weird, you know, from my point of view? Is that you know your ex Mike Epps? You know you see him, but you never really know you know what he could have made or what he's done. He's always been that supporting actor, mm -hmm. you know. But he's been in so many different movies, you know. Because I feel like, um, but what was the guy's name? It was Rob. Um, what was the actor's name? The comedian that always has everybody. I mean, a lot of comedians are known for you know supporting their other actors, right? Mm -hmm. And their other comedians and putting them in other roles. Roles. And you know, like when my, they bring that comedy aspect yeah, into the movie. Absolutely. So it's like he's been in so many movies, but nobody knew that you know he was that big. You know, I mean, at least from my point of view. Mm -hmm. So you know, did you know him, that he was that guy, or was he kind of like you know you saw him and maybe you didn't see him? You know, like was he? Did he have a familiar face, or he's like, hey, I'm Mike. Right, because I, I really didn't, you know what I mean? It wasn't like, oh, hey, that's so and so, because that was like 17, 18 years ago. And on top of that, knowing you now, like, I don't even think you really would care. No. You'd be like, eh, whatever. Yeah. Th whatever. That wasn't like my thing. Like I said, it was an instant connection. No, because you, you are the kind of person that, you know, your heart felt, you know, you're very sincere. You came from, a, you know, some really good folks, mm -hmm. you know, yes. so it had to have been that really amazing connection where you felt something and you're like, eh, I want to be around that person because I like who they are. Mm -hmm. So right, right. was he different, you know, then than he is now? Yeah, of course, you know. I, mean, we all, I guess we all are. Right? Exactly. But yeah. then also, too, I think in this business, when you get to a certain point, you do change. When you're making money consistently, your lifestyle changes. You know, when you live, because every, most people who move here first, you live in an apartment. Then when you can buy your first home. Not you, because you lived in Ladera Heights. But we, we weren't <laughs> in one of those million dollar houses, though. But you know what, though? I feel, you know, knowing you for so many years, I feel like you've always been the same person. You know, you always mm -hmm. said straight, stayed true to yourself. And, you know, I remember you had Bentleys and nice expensive cars, but you've never changed who you are. You know, mm -hmm. maybe like you swap the cars out, but the genuineness of who you are and always wanting to help your friends out mm -hmm. has it, always been sincere. It's never been about Hollywood. You know, you always had your grassroots of being you know, from Houston, knowing where you came from and who you are. Mm -hmm. I, I feel like a lot of people get lost in that. Right. And, you know, with a lot of the viewers that we have out there, what would you say, you know, this Hollywood absorbs them? You know, what have you learned throughout the years? And what would you suggest to who, you know, being an actor or an actress in their career? What would you suggest? Well, some people want to get lost. And that's why we have so many people doing drugs because they're, they're trying to escape who they are. So you have to be comfortable with you first. So I'm very comfortable. I'm like, this is who I am. And I was about to take a drink here, but... <laughs> <laughs> I was kind of scared. You know, she's always been sincere. She's never changed. I've never heard one negative thing, you know, spoke about you. Like, mm -hmm. and you know, that speaks volumes because you know, at the end of the day, it's all about your reputation. Right, right. And you know, I've heard some things about your ex, you know, but that's on him. But you are such a family person. You know the value, mm -hmm. the money is really within the family. Right. And you know, with all I the think, BS, you, you know what the best word for me to say is, I'm grateful. You know, some people feel like, oh, you owe this to me, like. A lot of men feel like I'm taking care of you. You owe me to cook me dinner. You have to do that. When you have that mindset, it makes you be a certain way with people. You know what I mean? With me, I don't feel like, um, oh, you owe me to take care of me. You better buy me that car. You know what I mean? No, but you're willing to work. Right. But, but, but a lot of people's mindset is what makes them who they are or how they are. So I'm just saying, like, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm grateful for the things that I have. I don't feel like... That someone like you're not caught up in the hype, That's right? What you're saying. Whether I have it or not, I'm still gonna be me. I'm still gonna be cool, and I'm still gonna be likable, and I'm still like that girl, you know. So, so you know, I ha as you know, Michelle, I have a, a good friend of mine, uh, Kai Mila. She was mm -hmm. married to Stevie Wonder, and you know, she one of the reasons why she said that you know she wanted to separate is because she lost her entity of who she was. Because mm -hmm. you know, she was in fashion. She did a lot of amazing things, and 
you know, being in Hollywood and being around all these different, you know, very high profile people, mm -hmm. you start to get lost into who you are. Mm -hmm. And I know with you, you know, it's always been about family first mm -hmm. and, you know, you secondary. So I think at one point you probably realize like, I don't want to do this no more. I want to do it about for my family. But She's I want to do it right. For me. She's totally right. Because even now after going through a divorce, I'm having to find me again. And I'm discovering, I'm rediscovering who Michelle McCain is. And it's crazy because where I am now, opposed to where I was a year ago, is totally different. And I'm like, wow, like this is cool, like being me, you know, because like you said, you do get lost in, like, even though you might not lose who you are in the sense of mentally, what you stand for, you know, what you want in life, but you do get lost because especially people who are in the industry, they're very, um, controlling demanding of what they need it's like um i think when you it's like you're doing movies and you're doing you cling to the the thing that's real or you know your significant other or whoever you're dating at that time so you want their energy you want their time so now just like i'm pretty sure with her when you try to do your own thing sometimes that's like saying hey i can't you want me to hang out with you i can't do that i can't go out tonight because you know what i have a shoot early in the morning so i need to just chill at the house you know, here you are, you're 20 years old. You met your future husband, and you know, obviously, you had a huge empire at the time. What was that like? Because you kind of got fast tracked, you know. Well, he he didn't have an empire at the time. Okay, so it was kind of like um, I think he was just about to shoot Friday after next. So it was kind of that in between spot. But I know. But he was in the first Friday, and people knew him. But come on, Ty. You know, just because you're in one movie in Hollywood. Yeah, this is Hollywood. You, but you you're, still, you're, you're seen most out there. people are broke. Yeah, but no one ever knows. I mean, look at TLC. They sold 90 million records, and nobody knew what they were going through. But the first record did not make them, you know what I mean? It's, it's over time of being, you know, showing up at this, doing videos, just being in the industry and working. That's the facade with Hollywood. That's the problem. Because everybody that's seen in Hollywood, they're kind of thought to be super famous, super successful, you know, Rolls Royces, Bentleys, right. big houses, lavish lifestyles. You know? So what I will say, though, is he was going to very lucrative uh, meetings, you know, because one thing you may not be um, have the money or be very famous in the world. But in, Ho in the Hollywood community, everybody knows what everyone's doing. So. Like he was going to move um, to meetings with Disney. C he was CAA was his agent, um, which is you know the biggest agency in the world. So I was going to these meetings. So wait, you just met your future husband. Now you're going to these meetings. So you're kind of you know fast tracked into that world, right? Exactly. But I'm I was like I told you I'm a smart girl, so I know business. So I get business. So you have a person who is like. You know, a black man, a black male who has to deal with white male, white Hollywood and trying to like I kind of bridge that gap. What was that even like? I mean, is that, you know, a discrepancy in Hollywood? Because a lot of people that, you know, know me, you know, and obviously I help out so many different kind of diverse communities. Is that a thing in Hollywood? Because I honestly don't even know. When you is say it, a thing, what do is you that mean? a thing? Is that is that a huge problem being being black in Hollywood? It is because. First of all, the way black people are raised, it's, it's a difference. And then you come out to Hollywood and the way things are done, like you said, it's fake. It kind of is set up that way. You can't go, get around it. It can never be real. Because how someone feels about a person, you can't tell them. You know what I mean? And nobody wants to know. Who cares? Because you could be an asshole and be just disgusting in real life. But when they turn the camera on, if you're amazing and great, that's all they care about. Because now you're going to make them money. You're worth money and you're lucrative to their production. Well, fast forward, you know, you started going to these meetings with your, was it your boyfriend, your husband at the time? My boyfriend at the time. First off, when did you guys get married? And how long after you guys met did you guys get married? Like four or five years afterwards. Four or five years? Mm-hmm. Okay. And, you know, you going with to these meetings, first off, really important means, did you negotiate any contracts? No, but I got what they were saying. So, like, when you go to the meeting, they're discussing, um, you know, just different, um, their point of view and what they're looking for. So, I'm a, I, I, just, I just got it very well. So, sometimes I would interject and, you know, be part of the conversation because I'm like, look. This doesn't happen all the time, and I'm going. I'm like, hey, I'm here. I got invited to the meeting, so I, and I know something. So then, and it's like, it's very funny how this industry is because 
when if if like I'm with him or I was with him, then it was kind of like, oh, you must be somebody. Or since that person brought you to the meeting, you're cool. And oh, hey, like you're you're good. You mean you're meeting all these really famous people around you. I mean, that's not something that your friends were probably doing, right? Well, well, when I lived in Houston, I, I would I would see, I knew a lot of people already before oh, so I moved nothing. to LA. So it wasn't like, oh my gosh, this is my first time seeing famous people or, you know, things like but that. I'm talking about, I'm sure you saw Kevin Hart's of the world that weren't even probably famous at the time, but right. maybe, you know, were coming up and getting a little bit of... No, you know, I really knew famous people before I moved to LA. Oh, okay. So, so it's no big people, deal. people who were, and not like a Janet Jackson or anything like that, but, you know... Did you meet her? No, oh. no, I'm just saying, <laughs> I'm just saying, I'm giving that as an example. Like, I, I would meet before I came here. I I knew people who are, who were famous. So, like I was meant to be in this industry. I know that. So when I came, I'm like, oh my gosh, this is the this. I'm going to the you know into the direction of where I'm supposed to go. I came here to be an actress. I see those things happening. I'm around these people. They are um, listening to me. You know, people behind the scenes that like I know what I'm talking about. I know what I'm doing. I was going to acting class. Um, any acting class that was the class to go to, I was going there. But when did you actually get your first part? I mean, people have this idea. You're married to a celebrity. Let's run a fast forward. You know, you're five years into your, you know, to your relationship. You finally got married. Um, did you have any prior engagements of acting, you know, while you're married, or was it mostly focused on, you know, your before I got days? before we got married because it was four to five years. So before I got married, I was in movies. Oh, you um, did do movies. Yeah. Did, so did like I did. You? So I did like Fighting Temptation. Now here's the thing: what people don't realize, Fighting Temptation wasn't that with Holly Carter and Beyonce and Little Zane and right? Yes, it was a huge uh huh. Movie. And Cuba Gooding Jr. Yeah, that was yes. a great movie. Okay, so now here's the thing: just like you could hook me up all day and say, "Hey, put her in this, do this," but I still have to do the acting. So it, it, even with music, I can get you a deal, but you have to sing the song. So you have to be talented already. That's not enough for someone to just say, hey, you're good. A lot of people have been referred to other people and they get on set and they get cut out the movie. So what was it like on your first movie role? So that was with Beyonce and Cuba Gooding Jr. So it's the scene that I was in was like in the bar scene where Beyonce's singing and Cuba Gooding Jr., you know, they're playing their role. And so I'm nervous. Like even with the cameras going, I'm nervous because I'm like, this is a big now. Now in my head, I'm like, this is big. This is huge. It's millions of dollars on the line. We have Beyonce, who's a huge recording artist, which I would see in Houston, though, because my mother had an office in the same building that they had an office. Wow. Her father. So I would see her in the elevator. You know what I mean? So it was. It, Did she recognize you? I don't think so. <laughs> I don't think so, but um, but you know, so but but still, I'm on set. This is my dream. That was more um, important to me that this is my dream. I came to LA to be an actress, and I'm on set with these people who I, you know, like Beyonce. I didn't grow up seeing her, but like Cuba Gooding Jr., you know, and the director, like they've directed to hear their body of work. It's like, oh my gosh, like my dream is coming true because everybody doesn't make it. A lot of people come here, but they don't make it. So you actually had the prep for this, right? So you went to acting schools and, you know, you're still nervous even though you were prepped, right? And you mm -hmm. study your sides. Right. Um, sides, lines, right? Yes. Uh -huh. um, and, you know, here you are with Cuba Gooding Jr., which I think he had a few movies that came out around that time. And he was huge, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. And Beyonce, she was in Destiny's Child. She was at the top of her game. Mm -hmm. And, well, I don't even want to say top of her game because she's still huge. Right. right? But she, The top uh, was yeah, there, the top started. Was going, right? But she, I mean, at the time, Destiny's Child, that was huge. Mm -hmm. So here you are with your opportunity, your chance. Did you audition for the role? Or was it something saying, hey, Michelle, maybe just try this role out? Or how did that even come about? Yes. So, of course, you know, I wanted to be in the movie. So I was like... Hey, you know, so I think he talked to somebody on the set and they were like, OK, let's do this. Let's give her a chance. So it wasn't too big where it wasn't, you know, if it, if it wasn't working, they can say, OK, no, that's not working or whatever. So, you know, the role was they, they, I would say people are always open to helping me. You know, especially in that, because when you've been re when you've been referred to someone, it's always a sense of like, OK, someone knows them. So it's going to be cool. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So I feel like they were like, okay, yeah, sure. We'll give her a shot. And then when I was doing my thing, it's like, all right, cool. She's good. You know? So, you know, it's not just who you know. It's also you have to perform. Mm -hmm. The bottom line is you have exactly. to perform because there's also their name on it. 
Right. So, you know, going into this a little bit further, so, you know, you got this role, you performed, the movie was a huge success. Mm -hmm. You know, what would you say to somebody that's trying to get into Hollywood and get into these roles? How would somebody get the opportunities that you've actually received? You can't, I mean, it's not the same thing because my well, story but they, is different. People want to get into your position. So, you know, like, is there any kind of techniques that to get in your position? First, I mean, you have to have it. They're not going to hang around forever 21 right that's that's what i'm saying that's michelle mccain's story so the thing is like i said you have to have it first you have to have something just because you want to be in hollywood you have to kind of figure out what's special about who you are because they're not looking for another holly berry maybe in the terms of like looks body type i'm looking for roles. Holly berry. help me <laughs> but i mean you still you know what i mean you it's like they use that to just sum up the adjectives that they're looking for but you have to figure out what's your thing what is your your stick that brings who you are to life you know what i'm saying a lot of the people that i know in hollywood you know they 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 came to hollywood for a particular passion mm -hmm. and you know you being who you are and always being so strong-willed what would you tell a 20 year old that you know was in your position what would you tell that person well definitely being cute is not going to get you to where you want to go. You might be able to get in a music video and shaking your butt, but I mean, is that your end goal? You know, you have to know what are you striving for? What do you really want? What do you, before you even go through the door, what do you, what are you willing to do and what are you not willing to do? You know what I mean? Because it's a lot of women from the Harvey Weinstein thing that said, hey, I slept with him because I wanted this role. You know, they actually were willing to do it. You know, so you have different people who will do different things. I'm not that girl who's going to um, sleep with, you know what I'm saying? A guy who's like, oh, I'm going to get you in this role because, okay, you sleep with him. Is he really going to put you in the role? You know what I mean? Are you getting played? It, you have a lot of things to look after, and then you, you're continuously doing that. That's taking a piece out of your soul. So that strong will that I have, you can't. it's kind of hard for you to keep having that, doing those type of things. So that's why I say you have to put in the work because nobody can take away you going to acting class every week. No one can take away you auditioning, getting booking the role and are on a show. No one can take that away. And consistency, especially in Hollywood, because I remember it's a lot of people who've come, gone back home, you know, um, had to take a break because of money. Just so many different things, but they weren't consistent. The people who were consistent, now I see them playing certain roles in Hollywood. I'm like, I remember we were all trying to make it before. You know, and I, I've seen that too. You know, growing up in Hollywood, I've seen um, a friend of mine just recently on Netflix. Her name was Kat, and she was on Vampire Diaries. And I, I can't believe, you know, where her career has blossomed to. And she's wanted so bad, like almost like taking a, that breath of air. You want it so bad because you need Cat it. Cat Graham. Yes. Because you know I, I auditioned for that role that she got, no. The Vampire Diaries. No way. Mm -hmm. And I remember, I think like she had just got it, but we both on the BET Hip Hop Awards, we presented together. Um, you were on that? The on BET what? Awards? Uh-huh, BET Hip Hop Awards as a presenter. Wow. This Very was cool. like, I don't even remember what year, but it was when she first started doing that. And do you know that when I first met her, she was just getting into Hollywood, you know, mm -hmm. she was cute and she wanted to do something, but she wanted it so bad mm -hmm. that she couldn't think anything else but being focused on her career. Mm -hmm. And I'm so happy when I look at her now, when I see her on Netflix and all these different TV shows, I'm like, I'm just proud of her mm -hmm. because she wanted it and she became successful because that was the only vision that she had was to her success and where she is now. Okay. So here you are, you know, you had what, 11 years of marriage? Yeah. 10 and a half. Mm -hmm. That's pretty good. I just guessed, actually. Yeah, that <laughs> was good. 11 years of marriage. Here you are after, you know, going through, I'm sure, um, a horrific divorce because most of them never end up good. Right. But, you know, what are you doing after the fact now? Well, now I'm just being fabulous daily. No. <laughs> so, um, you know, I'm a MILF now. Um, I have my two kids. And so right now it's about raising my children. Um, that's it always what, has for you. I mean. But no, it's different because I want to teach them that just because, okay, because with children, they view things differently than you do. So now my kids are in the background. They're seeing, okay, we used to live like this, and we used to live in this home, and daddy used to come home every day. Now he doesn't do that anymore. That's very different for kids. So it's kind of like, okay, my life has changed. Things are different. You know, now, because mommy is not on TV like daddy is. So now are we about to live, not necessarily in the hood, but 
Our things change and it's scary for kids. What's that like? You know, because honestly, you know, my family went through a divorce and I remember bits and pieces of it. And, you know, I'm sure it affected me, but I feel like maybe I took some of the, you know, the, the, the commotion that went on with my family into my own personal heart and said, maybe was I responsible? Is that tough as a parent for you? Yes, because with kids, they don't get it. They don't understand. Like now mommy has to rebuild. And I have to take care of me first right now. And I think that it was kind of, it was confusing and questionable. Kids want to know what's going on. They want to pinpoint exactly what's next, what's this. Familiarity is, is, is important to them and it's comfortable. So I just, I think that. Um, is it weird like for them going to school? Do you feel like, you know, because moms always kind of cover up for the fathers, I feel mm-hmm. like. Yeah, know? that's true. I, you know, people at the school were asking them. Oh, I heard that your parents are getting a divorce. Oh, I heard this and that. Oh, I heard, you know, and it's kind of like, damn. Not not, not to be rude to the, the fathers out there, but I feel like women, they take up for the man and the father's place, and they, they really try to cover up and compensate, you know, for the missing, you know, spouse. Mm-hmm. And the, how did that affect you? Well, initially I did, you know, but now I'm truthful and I'm honest with my kids. Because they're going to find out the truth anyway. So it's better for it to come from me than from the streets. You know? Yeah. So I'm honest with them about what's going on. So now I think to see the transition, they may have, may have been, you know, a little scary for them at first. But now they're like, okay, my mother is better than she was before. First off, what is your type? I mean, here you are out of a relationship. You know, are you dating right now? I ain't got no type. <laughs> no, you don't? I mean, it's white, black. Asian. I'm open. No. So now I feel a newfound freedom to just live my best life. So it's about me. You know what I'm saying? So whoever fits into that, that's who I'm open to. You know, I feel with you, I feel like it doesn't have to be any kind of race. You just have to be easygoing, funny, and be about family life. Right. And know that um, I'm, su- kill them. I'm super cool. No, I, re- I honestly feel that about you. Like, I feel like it's just really about soul and spirit. It doesn't and then, but, matter what you look like. It's just about who you are as a person, knowing yourself uh, very well and making sure that you're sincere to the next person. Mm-hmm. And, but I really, they need to know what, what you know, the, um, just the things that I bring to the table. Like, need to know it. Appreciate me. I need to feel appreciated. And they need to be a grateful person. And so what are you working on now? Um, so now, which I've always produced my own projects, but now it's at a different pace. It's all about me. You know what I mean? I have I can just totally commit to me and my production company. Um, sure, I'm doing a short film that I'm working on uh, called Footprints. It's about um, child um, uh, trafficking, human trafficking, children. Um, and I'm the person who's doing that. I want to show myself in a different you're, you're light. Are you the actress? Or you no, I'm the person who's human trafficking the the kids. That's a crazy role. Yeah, it time. is. It is crazy. But I'm I'm producing it and I'm starring in it. So you're producing, starring in it. Yes. Wow. Yes. What's and that like? It's a lot of work. It's a lot. It's a lot of yes, work. Yes, but I can do. I like. I love it. I love producing and I love acting. So I don't look at it that way. Yes, I do have to put in the work. Yes, it's going to be tiresome. But what I'm going to get out of it, that's what I'm looking for. And what platform would we see that on? I don't know yet because after I film, you know, there's so many streaming platforms now. So I, I don't know. But I also have a YouTube channel that I'm um, putting together um, because now people, you need to get put out content. I'm not going to wait for someone to hire me. So my goal is to put together my own, um, I guess, content and just um, build on it. And then somebody will give me money and I can go straight and film my own thing and go to Netflix and get a deal. I don't have to wait for somebody to hire me in their Netflix. But you're putting um, your own money out there. You're mm-hmm. acting in it. You're starring, you're starring, you're doing all your, your, you know, you're producing it. But I would say to the viewers out there that, you know, you're not going to wait for anybody. You're going to just do it. Yes. You're passionate about it first. And if you want it bad enough, you're going to get it. Mm-hmm. Exactly. So are you focusing you know, more on the camera or off the camera or both? Both. Right now, because my goal is to be a successful actress. That's what I came out here to do. So I want to accomplish that goal. And then, and I also produce because I can put, you know, put my money up to do my own thing and make the, the um, project happen. That, that comes into play with me not waiting for people. But I'm open to both sides. Like sometimes there may be a project that I just want to produce. I don't want to star in. 
But right now I'm focusing on both. Outside of acting and being a mother, um, you are an entrepreneur that wants to invest into commercial properties, yes. uh, residential, and make your money that way. Right. I just feel like um, I, have to, I have to live a certain lifestyle. I have to have a certain income coming in for my children and myself. Um, so, of course, you know, you, we always have our passion and the things that we want to do. But I also... I have another passion, which is real estate, like having my own apartment buildings and investing because, you know, I just feel like with the stock market is so risky. Um, I really enjoy doing the properties, re rehabbing a home, fixing it up where it's like it starts off one way. I guess there's a creativeness in me, you know, fixing it up and then selling or leasing it out those kind of things that's that's my thing because I, I think we're real estate people always need a place to stay so they're going to always need a property and you want that hard asset that you can see not just a stock that you see on nasdaq mm -hmm. you know something physically that you know you own which yes. is very smart because you know the grant cordones out there you know they always preach you know buy property buy property make your income and mm -hmm. you want to do it with a safe bet you know and actually right. own something that's making you an asset yes exactly you know? You know, obviously in Hollywood, a lot of the ex-wives, they keep their last names. Mm -hmm. And you decided right off the bat, you want to change your last name from Epps to McCain. Yes. And uh, you're moving forward, mm -hmm. you know, and you're proud of it. And you're saying, I know who I am. Mm -hmm. And you know who you are. And this is the thing. What is it that you want I to tell people? Well, I think the thing is, is um, who I was married to and what they do doesn't define me. You know what I mean? I'm Michelle McCain. Like before I met him and afterwards, I'm still going to be Michelle McCain. I'm still going to do the things that I did. And I contribute a lot to that relationship. It wasn't just, oh, you, you're lucky. You got somebody picked you and you were able to do. No, I contribute a whole lot to that relationship. And I, I have a lot to do with where that person is. Like, honestly, like I'm not going to let anyone take that away from me. And I just feel like the things that I helped him with, do that for yourself. Like, that's why I, on my Instagram, I'm like talking about self-love, self-esteem. Like, you really have to love yourself first. And then you can love someone else and you can be good to someone else. But I just really feel like you have to do what you want to do, no matter what anybody else thinks. Do what makes you happy. And if you do that, you're going to be okay. You're going to figure everything out and be consistent. If you say, hey, I want to do this. Do it. Don't you can't talk about it. it. Like me, if I'm saying, Oh, I want to be an actress, I want to be an actress, and I, you know, twiddling my thumbs and I'm not auditioning, people are not seeing me, people don't know I'm I'm acting. The way the world is set up now, you have an iPhone, you have cameras you can purchase yourself that are not that expensive. So it's like shoot your own thing. You know, that's so interesting because you know what you're saying right now is you're saying be self love, do what you want to do, be passionate about it. People have this perception of Hollywood, you know, that you have this glitz and glamour, but it's not really always about that. Right. You know, you got to put the hard effort into it. Mm -hmm. And that's what you're portraying here today. Yes. So I appreciate everything you're telling us and the audience here. You have to so, pay your dues. So, Ty, this year for me, I have so many big plans for myself. I really know where I want to go. I really know who I really am as just Michelle McCain. You know what I mean? So, um... It's going to be exciting. We have a few things we're working on. I'm excited about that. Absolutely. Yes. So um, I just really want to say thank you for having me on here. I want people to follow me on Instagram. Get some of this self-love from Michelle. Where can they find you? Michelle McCain on all platforms. And I kept it simple. M-E-C-H-E-L-L-E-M-C-C-A-I-N. Follow her. Yes. <laughs>